Hello there, this is John V, software evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching another Jscape MFT Gateway tutorial. In today's video, we'll talk about five different kinds of load balancing algorithms. We'll highlight their main characteristics and point out what they're best and least suited for. Ready? Let's begin. Round Robin is undoubtedly the most widely used load balancing algorithm. It's easy to implement and easy to understand. Here's how it works. Let's say you have two servers waiting for requests behind your load balancer. Once the first request arrives, the load balancer will forward that request to the first server. Then when the second request arrives, presumably from a different client, that request will then be forwarded to the second server. Because the second server is the last in this cluster, the next request, that is the third, will be forwarded back to the first server, the fourth request back to the second server, and so on in a cyclical fashion. As you can see, the method is very simple. However, it won't do well in certain scenarios. For example, what if server 1 had more CPU, RAM, and other specs compared to server 2? Server 1 should be able to handle a higher workload than server 2, right? Unfortunately, a load balancer running on a round-robin algorithm won't be able to treat the two servers accordingly. In spite of the two servers' disproportionate capacities, the load balancer will still distribute requests equally. As a result, server 2 can get overloaded much faster and probably even go down. You wouldn't want that to happen. The round-robin algorithm is best for clusters consisting of servers with identical specs. For other situations, you might want to look at other algorithms, like the following. For the second scenario we just talked about, that is server 1 having higher specs than server 2, you might prefer an algorithm that assigns more requests to the server with better capability of handling greater load. One such algorithm is the weighted round robin. The weighted round robin is similar to the round robin in a sense that the manner by which requests are assigned to the nodes is still cyclical. But there's a twist. The node with the higher specs will be apportioned a greater number of requests. But how would the load balancer know which node has a higher capacity? Simple, you tell it beforehand. Basically, when you set up the load balancer, you assign weights to each node. The node with the higher specs should of course be given the higher weight. Usually specify weights in proportion to actual capacities. So for example, if server 1's capacity is 5 times more than server 2's, then you can assign it a weight of 5 and server 2 a weight of 1. So when clients start coming in, the first 5 will be assigned to node 1 and the 6th to node 2. If more clients come in, the same sequence will be followed. That is, the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th will all go to server 1, and the 12th to server 2, and so on. Capacity isn't the only basis for choosing the weighted round-robin algorithm. Sometimes, you'll want to use it if, say, you want one server to get a substantially lower number of connections than an equally capable server for the reason that the first server is running business-critical applications and you don't want it to be easily overloaded. There can be instances when, even if two servers in a cluster have exactly the same specs, one server can still get overloaded considerably faster than the other. One possible reason would be because clients connecting to server 2 stay connected much longer than those connecting to server 1. This can cause the total current connections in server 2 to pile up, while those of server 1, with clients connecting and disconnecting over shorter times, virtually remain the same. As a result, Server 2's resources can run out faster. In this example, Clients 1 and 3 quickly disconnect while 2, 4, 5, and 6 remain connected for longer periods of time. In situations like this, the least connections algorithm would be a better fit. This algorithm takes into consideration the number of current connections each server has. When a client attempts to connect, the load balancer will try to determine which server has the least number of connections and then assign the new connection to that server. So if, say, 
Continuing our last example, client 6 attempts to connect after 1 and 3 have already disconnected, but 2 and 4 are still connected, the load balancer will assign client 6 to server 1 instead of server 2. The weighted least connections algorithm does to least connections what weighted round robin does to round robin. That is, it introduces a weight component based on the respective capacities of each server. Just like in the weighted round robin, you'll have to specify each server's weight beforehand. A load balancer that implements the weighted least connections algorithm now takes into consideration two things. The weights or capacities of each server and the current number of clients currently connected to each server. As its name implies, this algorithm matches clients and servers by random. That is, using an underlying random number generator. In cases wherein the load balancer receives a large number of requests, a random algorithm will be able to distribute the requests more evenly to the nodes. So like round robin, the random algorithm is sufficient for clusters consisting of nodes with similar configurations, meaning CPU, RAM, etc. That's it. We hope this video has helped you understand the differences between these five load balancing algorithms.